Greetings and welcome. This is The Cell Guru Show with me, Rajiv Makhni, and we've got an epic show for you. We'll start off with the Apple iPhone SE 2022. Launched finally, it's been a big wait. Most affordable 5G phone from Apple comes with a faster A15 Bionic chipset. That really changes the game. At this price point, you get that kind of power. It's amazing. That's the same as what you get in the iPhone 13 series. Design still very old school, still Touch ID, no Face ID, big fat bezels. So everything else is looking good. Plus iPhone 13 series now in new colors and more launches like the iPad Air and Mac Studio. Those, of course, will be on the Gadget 360 show. Then we'll move on to our review of the Samsung S22 series. Ultra, we've already done. We'll move on to the S22 Plus and the Compact S22. Both super powerful in terms of performance. Qualcomm Snapdragon Gen 1. High performance phones, great optics, no S Pen support, that is, as you saw on the Ultra. But I think these are really, really good phones. We'll tell you why. Then we'll tell you something really interesting and very exclusive. The Oppo Find X5 Pro is with us. Now, this is a phone that may not come to India. Super Super flagship category phone, powerful optics, the night mode and everything else is fantastic. You know, this is the phone I really wish Oppo does get to India because it's got it all. You know, the power, the looks, the performance, 80 watt fast charging, beautiful screen. We'll show you everything to do with it. And we'll move on to the Poco M4 Pro, under 15,000 rupee phone. Looks very, very interesting, very, very decent optics on this one. We'll show you our review. That and a whole lot more. Let's get started with today's Cell Guru Show. Of course, we're going to go start off with all the news coming in from the world of mobiles. And the big news, of course, was from Apple, the iPhone SE and the iPhone 13 series in green colors. Now, the Apple Peak Performance event was just that. Lots of things announced. Uh, some of this we're showing you here on Cellguru. Some of them will come on the Gadget 360 show. So the entry-level iPhone SE has finally been updated after almost two years. Same processor as the iPhone 13. That in itself is the game changer. A15 Bionic chipset, better battery backup from previous generation, and it gets 5G capability also. Same single camera, no change in design, which is a bit disappointing. Prices start at 43,900. I think this is great value for a great phone. Of course, some new colors for the iPhone 13 series also. Let's take a look. Apple's peak performance event wrapped up this week and the announcements came in hot and heavy with a focus on performance that should have phone, tablet and PC makers on notice. But out of all the new products revealed, the surprise hit might be the entry-level iPhone SE. The new iPhone SE, our most affordable iPhone, is also now powered by the incredible A15 Bionic chip. Now in its third iteration, the budget iPhone gets a major performance boost with the same A15 Bionic chipset as the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. This should make Apple's affordable iPhone amongst the fastest smartphones on the market. The A15 Bionic is also expected to give the iPhone SE significantly improved AI and ML capabilities. The iPhone SE is sticking to a single 12 megapixel camera on the back, but users can expect much better photographs thanks to the addition of Deep Fusion and HDR4 powered by the A15 Bionic. Alongside, the phone is also getting 5G capabilities for future proofing. Apple is even claiming better battery life. This is thanks to the much more efficient processor as well as a larger battery. Unfortunately, the iPhone SE misses out on the key feature from the big boys and that's MagSafe support. There is no update on the design front either and you still have to make do with the generation's old iPhone 8 styling. The thick bezels and physical touch ID button make the phone look ancient compared to the cutting-edge Android alternatives. Despite that, the best-in-class performance should have many takers amongst the gaming crowd. The phone is priced starting 43,900 rupees. Adding a splash to the colorful iPhone lineup are the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro in yet another shade. Called Alpine Green, the matte green shade should give fashion-forward users something to look forward to this season. And from the world of Apple, let's move on to the world of Samsung. Isn't it amazing? It all seems to happen all at the same time. So this is our review, our first impression of the S22 Plus and S22. Great phones, you know, S22, small little phone, big specs, designed like the S21 last year, but blazing fast specs. Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 processor, 50 megapixel camera, 120 hertz screen refresh rate, 25 watt charging on the S22, wireless charging support, and S22 also a really, really nice compact phone. Here then, and other first impressions. 
it takes two to tango and samsung's latest duo is here to spice up the extremely competitive value flagship segment two phones top of the line specs and just a few differences to segregate them. Can they fend off intense competition from OnePlus, IQ, Oppo, Vivo and most importantly the ever popular Apple iPhone? That's what we are here to find out in the Selguru review of the Samsung Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus. Don't be deceived by the small size of the Samsung Galaxy S22 5G. Samsung's Pocket Rocket is a full-fledged flagship in a compact form factor. The design mirrors that of last year's Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and that's not a bad thing at all. The aluminium mid-frame is wrapped in Gorilla Glass Victus Plus both at the front and back giving it the same premium feel as the Galaxy S22 Ultra. At the front you'll find a 6.1 inch dynamic AMOLED display with 120Hz support. With a peak brightness of 1200 nits, the screen is perfectly visible outdoors and displays excellent contrast levels, making it perfect for watching media. Looking for something a bit bigger, the Galaxy S22 Plus has you covered with a 6.6-inch display that goes even brighter all the way to 1750 nits. Both the Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus packs all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a flagship. This includes an IP53 rating for waterproofing as well as stereo speakers to kick the media watching experience up a notch. We found the speakers to be loud, well balanced with even a hint of bass. Perfect for music on the go. The ultrasonic in-display fingerprint readers are also amongst the fastest we have come across and never fail to recognize a fingerprint. Performance is identical on both phones thanks to Qualcomm's latest chipset. Yes, you heard that right. Samsung is finally powering its phones with the latest Snapdragon chipset in India. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 gives you all the grunt you need and the phone easily powers through any and all apps and games that you throw at it. We tried titles like Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact and Battlegrounds Mobile. The Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus both comfortably ran the games without a hitch with the settings cranked to the maximum. We observed that the S22 heated up a bit with long gaming sessions but still remained comfortable to the touch. That all out performance however doesn't mean bad battery life. In fact, Samsung has done extensive optimization to ensure all the use as part of One UI 4.1 built on Android 12. That however doesn't mean that both phones get the same battery life. Owing to its smaller size, the regular Galaxy S22 has a 3700mAh battery that we found barely made it through a day with heavy use. In fact, we were looking for a charger by the evening. The S22 does a lot better with a much larger 4500mAh battery that could comfortably go a full day. Both devices get wireless charging as well. The Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus are similar in more ways than one and this extends to the camera setup. At the back, you will find a 50MP primary camera sensor paired up with 10MP 3S telephoto lens as well as a 12MP ultrawide shooter. Interestingly, the telephoto and ultrawide sensors are exactly the same as on the top of the line S22 Ultra. Coming to the image quality, we came away impressed. The primary camera captures photos with excellent dynamic range. There is ample detail and good lighting. Samsung is going for a saturated look out of the box and colors look vibrant. The telephoto camera offers excellent reach, whereas the ultrawide shooter is capable of the same dynamic range as the primary sensor. The selfie camera impresses too with its 10 megapixel sensor that offers excellent detail across the board. Priced at Rs. 72,999 rupees and 84,999 rupees, the Samsung Galaxy S22 and S22 Plus bring you most of the top end experience for a lot less money. The two phones combined are amongst the best Android flagships you can buy right now and set the gold standard for value flagships to follow. But what do they miss out on compared to the third device in Samsung's portfolio? Yes, we are talking about the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. As it turns out, not too much. The materials, displays and even performance are largely similar across the three phones. The S22 Ultra however gives you more. Starting off from the Quad HD 6.8 inch screen, the S22 Ultra gives you extra embellishments for the premium experience. The primary camera too gets an upgrade to 108 megapixels. The S22 Ultra also packs a second 10x zoom lens for an even longer range. Similarly, the selfie camera gets a bump from 10 megapixel on the S22 and S22 Plus to 40 megapixel on the Ultra you'll also find a larger 5000 mAh battery. But while all the other additions are certainly nice to have, the real differentiator lies in the S Pen. The S22 Ultra is the bridge between Samsung's S and the much-loved Note series. A slot sits along the bottom left corner to integrate the S Pen that can be used for scribbling, doodling and all your favorite S Pen actions. But is it worth the significantly higher 1,9999 rupees price tag? That's for you to decide. 
Now let's move on to a phone I absolutely fell in love with. I'm going to tell you again, Oppo, get the Oppo Find X5 Pro in India. This is a super flagship phone. Love the back, ceramic back, shiny back. Attracts a lot of fingerprints. Who cares? This is beautiful to look at. Love the way the camera module just merges into the body. 80 watt fast charging, 50 watt wireless charging, 120 hertz screen, Android 12. Beautiful triple camera setup that really, really works well. Oppo, kya kar rahe ho hai? Bring it to India. Ever so often, technology and smartphones are bound by the shackles of considerations like price and target demographics. In India, Oppo has played by those same limitations which have bound it to the mid-range segment for the most part. The Oppo Find X Pro is not that phone. A culmination of all the work Oppo has been working, the Find X Pro could very well be a best of compilation of all the advancements it has made. India might not be getting the smartphone anytime soon, but here's a glance at what you might be missing out on. In a world of symmetric lines and curved corners, the Oppo Find X Pro is all about breaking the symmetry. It is a polarizing design for sure, but the micro-crystalline ceramic texture and unique housing is premium and futuristic no doubt. The front has Gorilla Glass Victus and the entire package is IP68 rated, making the sci-fi design equally resilient. Other additions like stereo speakers are par for the course and as good as you would want from a high-end smartphone. Oppo's in-display fingerprint implementation is equally excellent and the phone unlocks before you know it. The 6.7-inch AMOLED display is, in our opinion, one of the key selling points of the phone. The X5 Pro's 120Hz LTPO panel looks absolutely stunning. The 1300 nits of peak brightness is more than sufficient for viewing under blazing sunlight. More importantly, being an LTP O2 panel, the screen can go anywhere from 1Hz to 120Hz for smoothness and power savings. The implementation is absolutely fantastic. Performance is cookie cutter flagship, which is to say not bad but not unexpected. You will find a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset paired with 12GB of RAM. Oppo has done a good job mating its software to the hardware and the end result is a buttery smooth user interface. Battery life is another area where Oppo is going all out. It's got the 5000 mAh battery we've come to expect from flagships, but the software optimization makes it go longer. 8 hours of use isn't impossible and 80 watt wired charging brings it back to 100 before you know it. Prefer wireless charging? You'll find 50 watt support here. On the camera front, Oppo is using a custom Mari Silicon X ISP instead of Qualcomm's alternative. Early testing showed that the 50 megapixel primary camera is more than capable of high quality output. There is an astounding amount of details with excellent dynamic range. Low light shots surprise as well with fantastic control over noise and detail. The 2x telephoto lens maintains the same color science and doesn't bump up noise too much. Finally, there is a 50 megapixel ultra wide shooter that keeps edge distortion in check and backs it up with punchy colors. Over to the selfies. Images look excellent with good control over skin tones and slightly punchy colors. The edge detection is up there with the best for portrait images. In our brief time with the Oppo Find X5 Pro, it is clear that the company has a flagship on hand that competes with anything else in the segment. The phone delivers hits on almost all fronts making it a shame that we won't be seeing a release in India. Let's take a quick break right now on the show and we come back lots more happening Next up is our review of the Poco M4 Pro. Now, Poco does really, really interesting phones. Real bang for buck, right? This one has a 6.43-inch AMOLED display. 90 hertz display, not 120. MediaTek Helio G96 processor. So, good processor for this price point. 4 GB RAM, 5000 mAh battery. Big camera island at the back. Not really subtle. Very in your face. Priced at just 1 rupee under 15,000 rupee. Somehow or the other, I was just expecting a lot more from this Poco phone. India's most competitive segment, the one under 20,000 rupees, is the battleground for nearly every smartphone manufacturer. Even though the premium budget segment is crammed with options, 
there is always space for more and standing out is not easy. The latest warrior to fight for its ground in the 20K segment is the new POCO M4 Pro. Since its introduction, POCO has been known for delivering best-in-class performance and good specs on a budget. In the Selguru review, we find out if POCO has pulled it off again. The M4 Pro is loud when it comes to design. The shiny dual-tone back panel certainly looks different, but the dull looks don't really shout out premium. That said, we like that the plastic back is smudge free and feels comfortable to hold. The phone has Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and an IP53 rating for dust and splash resistance. The fingerprint scanner is embedded in the power button and we found it quick enough to unlock the phone. Moving on to the display, the M4 Pro has a 6.43 inch 1080p AMOLED display with a 90Hz refresh rate. It is the first AMOLED panel in POCO's M series and we agree it's a good addition. The display colors are bright and the screen is legible even under direct sunlight. Powered by the MediaTek Helio G96 chip and paired with 8GB of RAM, the phone performs well in day-to-day -day tasks. That said, a gaming phone this is not. We notice lags while playing heavy games like Genshin Impact and Call of Duty. You'll definitely want to pull down the settings if gaming is a priority. On the software side of things, there is MIUI 13 based on Android 11. The phone UI looks clean but there is quite a bit of bloatware on the phone. Thankfully, no ads though. Coming to the cameras, the M4 Pro has a triple rear camera setup on an absolutely enormous camera island. You'll find a 64 megapixel primary lens, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and another 2 megapixel macro lens on board. The main lens clicks good detailed shots in daylight, but colors aren't quite true to life. Dynamic range also suffers with some crushed black and highlight clipping. The phone is far from great for low light shots with significant noise and loss of detail. The ultra wide captures enough light to capture the scene, but that's about it. Colors appeared washed out with significant edge distortion as well. Finally, the macro lens puts up a brave front, but the low resolution sensor fails more often than not. On the front, there is a 16 megapixel selfie camera that clicks decent selfies. The phone is equipped with a 5000 mAh cell that comfortably lasts a full day. Additionally, a 33 watt fast charger is included in the box, which takes the phone from 0 to 100 in about an hour. The Selguru verdict. Price starting at 14,999 rupees, the Poco M4 Pro is a decent value for money option with all the qualities that represent Poco. However, it doesn't have quite enough to be the standout option in this segment. That then is the Cell Guru Show for this week. A huge amount of great stuff coming next week. Do join me then on the show. Oh, <laughs>